Hello and welcome back to the Technical Effects YouTube channel. This is Technical Insights episode 145. I apologize it wasn't released yesterday. This weekend has been very busy and today's a busy day as well, but I wanted to squeeze in an episode. So within this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the US dollar index, US oil, USD CAD, Euro AUD and Euro NZD. Those are the markets that we will be taking a quick brief overview. Hope you guys have had a great start to November, of course, as we are now into November. But let's dive into the charts. Of course, please do give us a like, comment and subscribe. I appreciate you guys being here. Um, let's start off with the US dollar. Um, it was a bit of a slow start to the week last week, which will break down because of it's something that we see happen very often. Uh, when we have high impact data releases. And last week, we had quite a lot of high impact data releases. And before those releases, we end up with choppy rangey movement, building up liquidity. It's also something that I've shared in our public community um, with regards to being aware of this um, before news releases. But before we go into that, let's just take a look here at the daily time frame. So on the naked charts with the daily time frame, down here we have our daily higher low point and up here we have our daily higher high. Now we're aware of these equal highs up here that again, more than likely eventually price will look to uh, come and take. Also down here we do have this imbalance as a area of interest still that price could possibly come down into. Um, as we can see here within this trading range, we have been quite choppy uh, con compared to previous trading ranges where we end up with our nice impulse followed by correction, followed by follow through. Uh, but this movement that we are seeing within this trading range is still corrective movement. Uh, it's not impulsive movement to the downside. We can see obviously lower time frame impulse movements within that area. But here on the daily time frame, we are technically still bullish. But we did see this heavy downside move here on Friday. Uh, as you can see, which was, of course, we had non-farm payrolls um, on Friday. So let's take us back over into the charts here where we know that the daily time frame is bullish. So last week, what did we see happen? Uh, this dotted line here in the middle is the weekly break. So at the start of the week, we started with a range, right? We had a bit of a larger range building up liquidity. We built up these highs up here and we also built these lows down here. Uh, this low here was actually from the previous week. So we built up these lows. Um, and also during the day of Wednesday, this here is the movement that we saw, okay? So this is the one hour movement that we saw happen on Wednesday. Before what? Before we ended up with the FOMC news that we had on Wednesday evening. What do we see happen when we have that news? We sweep to the downside and then we also take the upside. Price then took a retest before continuing off to the upside where we did break one hour time frame structures. When we break structure, we always want to see price then follow through with some corrective movement. However, we can see here that we have actually come through with some heavy impulsive movement. Now, this here is a one hour time frame higher high. Uh, but we do want to see the price flow start to form corrective movement uh, to enable us to still see the continuation movement to the upside. Uh, if we don't see uh, descending corrective movement, so down here we have equal lows, okay? And this was formed by the wick that we had um, on FOMC, which has developed the equal lows along here that price could very well now look to come down into a corrective manner, sweep, and then continue off to the upside. Other than that, due to the fact that we had the impulse movement to the downside and we also had that heavy bearish daily candle close on Friday, if we was to see some slow movement ascendingly correctively move into the upside, it can very well lead us down into this daily area of imbalance down here, okay, which is what I shared with you guys over here. This area of imbalance, we do actually have some liquidity down here as well, some equal lows in this region that price could very well look to target. So we have broken a structure. However, we also need to see that price flow fulfill in order to show us upside movement. Um, so we've established trading range and we've also established what we would need to see, two options. We've got ascending corrective movement for some potential downside, or we have descending corrective movement, sweeping those equal lows for then potential upside movement. And that is currently how the dollar sits. 
Now then, let's take us into US oil. Um, so we go into the naked charts. Now, if we take a big zoom out of US oil, okay, uh, and we actually look from left to right, we'll be able to see that we had this very large push to the upside. Sorry, let me move this out of the way because my camera is in the way. This sometimes happens. Um, so you'll be able to see that this here was our previous high, okay, and we had this strong push to the upside. Um, impulsive movement, and then we've since seen this large descending corrective movement. So overall, the daily time frame has been within this large range for quite some time, and therefore having to focus more on four hour time frame structures in this region. So if we come into this region over here, and we just work our way again from left to right, and we then break down from lower high right here, okay, so if we work our way left, uh, we can work our way a bit more. So here we had a break to the downside right there, creating this lower low point right here. And you can then see the highest point here that caused the break to the downside, creating this lower low. Okay, so that there was our lower high into lower low. We then saw this impulsive movement to the upside, breaking that four hour time frame high. So therefore the four hour time frame has now shifted bullish in line with that previous daily strong bullish leg that we've seen to the upside. Following on from that, we've seen this descending corrective movement here to the downside, and we're now following through with this upside movement. So we know now that the four, four hour time frame here of this market is currently bullish. And now as we come here into the one hour time frame, you should also now be able to see how here we had a higher low into this higher high point, into this new higher low, and then last week, we finished the week with this strong push to the upside. So we've now seen price create, uh, well, hasn't actually formed that new higher high point as of yet, uh, because we do need to start seeing price retrace. Uh, however, in this area here, we can see that we had corrective movement, came down, swept these equal lows, and then we've seen price take off this move to the upside. So what I would do now is I would be looking at removing this, and that now gives us a new trading range to work with. So now we have a higher low point here. We can drag this just back over here right now. Um, we could possibly form some equal highs on this high up here. So we could form some equal highs on this potentially. Um, but for the moment, what I'm gonna be looking for as we go into next week is the same as what we saw in this move here, right? So here we had an impulse followed by correction sweep in liquidity followed by an impulse. I'm gonna look for another correction, followed by a sweep of liquidity, to then look for a shift, to then take us to the upside. As long as we don't break this higher low point here, that is what I will be looking for as we go into next week within US oil. We're able to break it down into a trading range and it's only within this area. Of course, if we break this low, then that would tell us that we're more than likely gonna see some further downside movement. Where could that lead us here within, um, within uh, US oil. Well, if we take a look just down here uh, on the four hour time frame, you'll be able to see that we do have this gap. So it's possible that we could potentially end up coming down and filling that gap if we was to, of course, shift direction. Uh, but for the moment, whilst the structures here do remain bullish, I will be looking at further upside movement until we do break this. You may be thinking, well, why haven't I put a high on this point here? Well, as you can see, we've only just started to see tiniest bit of retracement. If I had done it here, well then we've already broken it. And that's not a new one hour time frame higher low point. You can see the difference right here between this retracement. This clear clearly is not a retracement there for the one hour time frame. So right here, this wouldn't be the actual higher high point. It could be. We could open up the market and we may just start to take some downside and that is the higher high point. But right now, we can't actually confirm that until we do start to see a bit more downside movement. So once we see that downside movement, we would then have a new trading range and this is the space that we will be working in. That right there is US oil. Now moving into USD CAD, we have seen price here. Uh, it was choppy, rangy, um, just like the dollar. Uh, as you can see through here, lots of rangy movement. Price pushed to the upside and took this high. We had a break in structure. After that break in structure, I was looking for corrective movement. Without corrective movement, there's no further potential upside at that moment in time that I would look for. As you can see, we never had 
that corrective movement. We had impulsive movement that's brought us all the way back to the downside, breaking this low. Let's bring us over into the charts over here and go into the daily time frame because this is interesting. So right here, what we can see is our daily structures. So right here, we had a higher high that had a close above. That means that this right here is our higher low point. Therefore, we can see now that we've had a break and close below it. On this low, we had very rough equal lows. This could potentially be a sweep. If it's not, then we're going to see potential corrective upside movement on the lower time frame, filling potentially some of this heavy imbalance. Um, and then we see further downside into some of these areas down here. And therefore, what I'm looking for next week, as you can see, we've now got this high point here. I'm now looking next week for price to put in a low. Once price puts in that low, we can watch to see whether we get that ascending corrective movement. Again, looking for areas of interest within that trading range for price to come into to potentially continue to the downside. We end up with impulsive movement to the upside. What would that tell me? That would tell me that price is purely and simply just sweeping these lows on that higher low point of the daily time frame and would be looking for upside movement. Pretty heavy downside candle there on Friday, so we could very well see some continuation. And uh, this is definitely market I will be interested in next week because we've had this impulsive movement. It all now comes to what price flow we get from this. Are we going to get corrective? Are we going to get impulsive? And again, relates back to the dollar here. Are we going to end up with corrective or are we going to end up with impulsive? Um, so just coming back here into USD CAD, same thing here as what I just mentioned in US oil. Can we place a structure point right here? Well, the answer to me is no, because we've not started to actually see the retracement yet. We need to start to see the retracement in order to enable us to place our structure point. Um, so for the moment, I wouldn't have this here as my structure point. But if it was, and we did see the market open and start to retrace, then this would be the area that we're working in. Okay, so this here is the area we're working in. Price can obviously come all the way up into here, but we would need to see the price flow form correctively. Um, so that is as it is as we go into next week with USD CAD. Uh, this could possibly be a sweep of liquidity. Uh, we didn't really get much uh, impulsive movement away from here uh, on Friday afternoon, but again, it was late Friday afternoon that we did come down and have a close below this point. So as we go into next week, it will be interesting to see are we going to get that ascending corrective movement? Because we need to remember this daily candle here has left behind all of this imbalance right here. Uh, and we could potentially see price on the lower time frames come up, feel some of this before it looks to continue to the downside. Just like we see here, right? This here, we have daily imbalance. What do we get? We get this wick before we get continuation. Obviously, right now we're in the potential of some downside movement. Um, so that's what I will be watching as we go into the new week here for USD CAD. There's potential for some downside movement as long as we don't get impulsive movement to the upside. Coming into Euro AUD and Euro NZD, uh, these are two markets which are definitely interesting for next week. So let's come into the charts over here. Now, both of these markets on the daily time frame are currently bullish. However, we have seen price break above this high. And what do we generally see after we break structure? We generally see a retracement. And that is currently what we're seeing right here. We've had the four hour and the one hour time frame shift bearish. So we are seeing price currently retrace. We have seen price here come into this daily imbalance. But for us to be able to see further upside movement from that point there, we need to see the one hour time frame shift. Apart from that, we could very well see price take a deeper retracement to the downside. So as we come into the charts over here and we have started our retracement right here, as you can see, okay, this is that daily imbalance right here that I just mentioned a moment ago that price has reacted from. Right here, you can see, we're gonna change this to red. Um, you'll be able to see that we have a bearish trading range right here and this is the space that we have left to work with. Just like what I was saying with the previous markets in terms of breaking down the market into that range in terms of that's the space we've got to work with. And it's either we see what we uh, are looking for in that region or we don't. So from here, uh, we've established that the daily time frame is bullish. The lower time frames are bearish. We currently got a bearish trading range here at the moment within Euro AUD. 
Last week, I looked at the possibility that from this move here, we could have possibly seen the market shift to the upside. However, we then ended up forming uh, this correctiveness to the upside here, followed by impulsive push to the downside. And now in this region here, what would I look for? I'm looking for potentially a very similar move like this. Price to show us some corrective movement, build up some liquidity, see that swept, and then be able to see downside movement. Looking over here for our areas of interest where price could potentially come into, just highlighting some imbalance areas right here on the um, one hour time frame that we could potentially see price come into. If we see everything fulfill within that range, then we will be looking for price to roll over. Is there reason for price to roll over? If we come over here, we can see that we've got these two rough equal lows, got some one hour imbalance down here as well that price may look to trade into. So that would be for a bearish move for Euro AUD. The opposite would be if we would be see price break this to the upside. If we break this to the upside, then that would really show us here that the daily is looking to show continuation. Would be ending up with an engulfing to the upside, breaking above this high if it happens within the one day. And then that therefore would lead us to be able to see further upside movement. So right now what we've done is, is purely and simply just track price in this trading range, which is why I love, and that's why we use trading ranges of our structure points, because if we squeeze price into an area where it's either we see what we're looking for, or we could potentially break structures. So that's therefore the other option. In here, we're looking for potential corrective movement for downside. Um, otherwise, if we break this to the upside, we'll then be looking for after a break in structure, what do we expect? Potential retracement. So if we was to break that, we could then see a shift before we then see further upside movement, which again would be our higher time frame descending corrective movement that we're seeing right here. Right now, it's this trading range in here on the lower time frame that we've broken the market down into that we're focusing on. So that right there is Euro AUD. Now Euro NZD, very, very similar. Um, you can probably see here that we've uh, squeezed ourselves into a trading range and started a bit of a retracement. So let's bring us into the uh, daily time frame over here. We've got a very similar uh, move. So this here was our previous daily high that came all the way down into this low. Uh, very impulsive movement. We had lots of movement in the middle where we had to focus on four hour structures. Uh, and then we ended up breaking this to the upside. After a break in structure, what do we expect? A retracement. And that is currently what we are seeing within price. So at the moment, the daily time frame is bullish, but we've got bearish movement on the lower time frames. We can bring us here into the four hour time frame. We can see that we break in higher low, this higher low here that created this high up here and uh, bringing us to the downside. Sorry. Yeah, that didn't close above. Um, so bringing us to the downside, so four hour, one hour time frame bearish, bringing us into the charts over here, uh, we'll be able to see that we've got our one hour time frame trading range, just like Euro AUD. We've got two options, price to potentially form what we're looking for in this area here for downside movement. You can see here that we've already got a rough bit of liquidity building up. Price can very well come up sweep this and then we see downside movement. Let's just remove those drawings just so it's a bit clearer. See, build of liquidity, sweep of liquidity, downside movement like this, right? If you look at what I'm showing you that I would look for here, what can you see that price done right here? Price done the exact same thing. So we're looking for the exact same thing right here to enable us to see further downside. This is just like what I mentioned within Euro AUD just like what I mentioned within USD CAD. We got that trading range, we're looking for that price flow. So if we are able to get that move in here, we'll be looking for price to roll over from this point into further downside to take this low. We must always be aware though that this market on the higher time frame is still technically bullish. So if we was to see price impulsively break this to the upside, we would be breaking structures to the upside and we could then look for a retracement because we've broken structures to potentially then see upside movement. 
And uh, that is pretty much as simple as it gets within terms of Euro AUD, Euro NZD. And these markets are really the two markets that I will put more focus into uh, next week until some other markets get a bit more of a cleaner trading range. That's exactly what I do is I purely and simply go through my markets and uh, analyze to see where I can really squeeze price into a good trading range to enable me to see uh, clear direction. And here you can see that we've got some nice clean, clear trading ranges within Euro AUD and Euro NZD. USD CAD does, of course, need a bit of work, where, of course, it's quite a large trading range here. So we obviously need to start to see that correction fulfill. Euro, uh, sorry, US oil is the same, where, of course, we've got a higher low here. Uh, we're looking for higher high. We don't really want it to be too large, the trading range. I prefer smaller trading ranges than larger trading ranges. And again, that's part of my filtering process when I'm going through the markets. Uh, and you can see here previously how this trading range here was a nice trading range, higher low into higher high. What do we see? Exactly the same thing as what I just mentioned in the other markets. We're looking for the same thing across the board over and over again. And it's not just on this time frame. We look for it across the time frames, and that's how we build it together. Um, and therefore, we can see that we pushed off to the upside. And I would be looking for that same thing here within US oil. So you can see here how I've filtered out the markets, and I'm looking for the same thing across all these pairs right here. Um, and that right there, guys, is the end of Technical Insights, episode 145. Apologize if it was a bit of a shorter episode. Uh, today is a busy day. It's been a busy weekend. Uh, I do also have personal things that I do do, but I always like to keep consistent as possible and bring you guys an episode. So I do appreciate you guys tuning in. That has been episode 145, and I'll see you in the next episode.